بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد The eighth juz or eighth para of the Quran uh, continues on with Surah Al-An'am and then upon the completion of Surah Al-An'am we move on to Surah Al-A'raf As for Surah Al-An'am uh, in this last part of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically concludes by once again uh, emphasizing on the, on the topic of the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, the mushrikun and some of their superstitious beliefs that they had regarding cattle, livestock, al-an'am. Uh, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these, uh, you know, uh, false uh, superstitious beliefs and acts of worship that they used to do, and he refutes them. Uh, also, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, at the end of this surah some of uh, the rulings pertaining to uh, what kind of meat are Muslims allowed to eat. And so Allah mentions that we're only allowed to eat uh, that which was slaughtered uh, and the name of Allah was pronounced upon it. Uh, in other words, when the, the animal was slaughtered, uh, the, the one slaughtering said the name of Allah uh, when slaughtering. And how meat that is not slaughtered with the name of Allah, then it is unlawful for us to eat. Uh, also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions uh, in these verses at the end of Surah Al-An'am uh, he warns us of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how uh, you know warning us uh, against uh, you know not following his path and not submitting to the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by mentioning for example that he had destroyed uh, the nations of the past because they did not abide by his commands. Uh, also, one of the very last verses mentioned in Surah Al-An'am is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهِ That uh, my prayer and my nusuk and my rights uh, of, uh, you know, hajj and so on and so forth all of these are for Allah alone. And my living and my dying, they are all for Allah alone. Uh, and no one shares with Allah in that. So once again, emphasizing uh, the importance and the significance of the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, after that, we move on to uh, Surah Al-A'raf. Surah Al-A'raf, uh, which is basically... Uh, the, 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 the remaining half of this juz. And uh, Surah Al-A'raf basically uh, begins uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning uh, the, the story of Adam alayhi salam and how he was deceived by shaitan. How he and his wife were deceived from shay uh, by shaitan who uh, basically deceived them into eating from the tree that Allah had forbidden them from eating from. Uh, and, you know, what happened as a result uh, of them eating from the tree. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this story, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, addresses us, the sons and the daughters of Adam alayhi salam. And so Allah says, Ya Bani Adam, four times Allah uh, uses this call and this address, Ya Bani Adam, four times Allah mentions it uh, in the following verses, uh, to basically uh, bring our attention to the fact that we are, you know, from Adam alayhi salam. We are the descendants of Adam alayhi salam. And so Allah reminds us that just like uh, Iblis deceived Adam, he will also deceive us. And we are no different than Adam السلام, in terms of our human nature. So let us beware of Iblis and his plots 
and his traps. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, the scene that will take place uh, in the hereafter. Uh, concerning, uh, you have you know, the people of Jannah on the one hand, and then you have the people of Jahannam, the people of the hellfire on the other hand, and then you have a people who will be in between. And these people are known as Ashab Al-A'raf, as Allah mentioned uh, in the surah. Uh, and Al-A'raf basically means the heights, the heights, uh, or you could say the cliffs uh, where they are standing. Uh, this group of people are standing, uh, you know, at, at a place where they are between uh, the people of Jannah and the people of the Hellfire. And uh, they're very worried, and they don't know what's going to happen to them. Uh, and so there's a conversation that takes place. Uh, between them and the people of Jannah, and between them and the people of the Hellfire. And, you know, each one of us should, uh, you know, uh, picture that scene, and read these verses, uh, and contemplate over them, and imagine that perhaps uh, we may be one of them on that day. Uh, and then, the end result is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves them, uh, you know, from His mercy, He saves them, and the end result is that he admits them into uh, Jannah. Uh, after that, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions to us the stories of several prophets. And he mentions the stories in you know, quite some detail. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of Nuh alayhi salam and the story of uh, Hud alayhi salam uh, with his people Aad. And also the story of Salih alayhi salam with his people Thamud, and also the story of, of Shu'aib, uh, uh, and also the story of Lut alayhi salam. Uh, and, you know, the, the lessons, there are many lessons that can be uh, learned from uh, these stories, uh, but the overriding lesson that we find from all of these stories is uh, how these prophets were resisted by their people. But the end result was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them victory and destroyed their people who disbelieved in them. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice uh, is that Allah has mentioned these prophets and their stories with their people throughout the Qur'an in so many different places. Uh, however, uh, one of the interesting things is that in each uh, place where the story is mentioned, we have uh, you know, something new that we learn. And so it's not simply repeating. It's not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeating, you know, uh, what he has already mentioned. Yes, there are a few things in general that are repeated, but some of the more finer details are new. And so in each different place in the Qur'an where Allah mentions these stories, we have a new lesson that can be learned. And so we should uh, contemplate over these stories and learn the lessons that, are, that can be derived from them. Uh, with that, we conclude uh, this juz, the eighth juz of the Quran. Uh, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu wa la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.